is a time of great troubles in Faerun. The people toil under the boot of unjust, selfish leaders who seek to make themselves fat off the sweat of their labor. Kings and queens cower behind their castle walls as the lands around them grow darker, with violence and lawlessness taking hold. But even now there are heroes, noble men and women of all races and status who seek to find decency among the bloodshed and chaos. Our story begins with six such adventurers as fate brings each of them closer to their destiny in the riverside village of Nightstone, along Faerun's infamous Sword Coast. Hey, my name is Aram, and welcome to Rivals of Waterdeep. We are going to be starting at the beginning. So this is going to happen just before the stream of many eyes, if you tuned in uh, for that while we were out in L.A. And we're going to go around the table and introduce ourselves. Hi, I'm Tanya DePass. I will be playing Celise, a human paladin. Uh, I'm Brandon Sinis. I'm playing uh, Ren Leandon, and I'm a high elf. Uh, my name is Cicero Holmes. I'll be playing Perrin Underbow, and I am a halfling bard. Hi, my name is Carlos Luna. I will be playing Knock Knock, a half-orc fighter. Hi, my name is Serena Marie, and I'll be playing Ashburn, a level four half-elf ranger. Hi, and my name is Sharif Jackson, and I'll be playing Shaka, a tiefling warlock. Excellent. And we are going to open with Celise. You have been having visions nightmares, waking dreams, panic attacks, but always with this idea of the city of Nightstone crumbling under darkness and evil. And you've been trying to get other people in your order to listen, but no divination magics can, con uh, can confirm it, and you just can't get the church to do anything about it. You finally have a meeting, one meeting, with an old friend in Waterdeep, and you're heading there now. So the boat's kind of like pulling up to the dock and the Hall of Justice, as it's called. The uh, Church of Tear in Waterdeep is literally called the Hall of Justice. Is I it really? Name it. Okay. it really is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it really is. <laughs> so the Hall of Justice looms before you with all of its marble. And I believe there's a fountain in the front, right? Oh, right. Wow. Yeah. Nice. You walk in and you are met by... A old friend of yours, Priest Vera Greywin. She was at the temple with you. She was one of your instructors, and she is now one of the elders in uh, the Hall of Justice. Vera, thank you for meeting with me. Of course. It's so good to see you. It's good to see you, too. I just wish it was under better circumstances. Yes, I've, I've heard of yes. your dreams. I'm sorry that we have not been able to confirm. I... I've tried myself, but here, please sit. And she walks over. It's like a bench where there's coffee and a nice fountain nearby. Please, uh, how can I help? You have to help me convince them to, to do something about this. Danger is coming and they won't listen to me. I have tried. They will not listen to me either. But you're an elder. I only have so much sway and there are many things happening right now. I have got you passage and I have got you time if you wish to handle this yourself it can be done but that is all I can do can you not go with me I cannot I have duties here my child that are very important otherwise I would I can however give tears blessing thank you and she would kneel with you and just uh, you filled with purpose and filled with drive. So you have advantage on your uh, the next role you choose. Oh, thank you for this blessing. I will do my best to serve you well and hope that I can convince them that the danger is very real. I hope so as well. If you find anything, report back immediately and I shall send others to your aid. There's a horse waiting for you in the stables. It is brushed down and ready. That is all I can do. Thank you. I will report as soon as I know something. Excellent. So, and then you head out. Yep. All right. Rin, you have been called. Now, 
near this city of Nightstone, there is a woods called the Ardeep Woods, and there are some very old and traditional elves in these woods. And they have a lot of friction with the city because they, they like to have hunts there, and, you know, big game hunters will pay good money to go, you know, basically walk all over your elven lands and shoot a bunch of stuff that doesn't belong to them. So because of your unique perspective and your ability to kind of understand the human condition, even though you're an elf, and kind of understand what motivates them, you've been hired to work as the liaison between the elves and the humans to try and keep this before it gets to bloodshed. So you're currently kind of scouting the area, the uh, band of like fields between the woods and the town. So Ren's like walking down um, the woods right now and he's just like, how much am I going to make this time? I'm really excited. I'm really excited. <laughs> the hunters make good money, too. I mean, you could play both sides here. Well, I mean, I can see what is going on with them, or I can, you know, get all the money myself. Maybe a little selfish. You know, it's just me on the road doing my own thing. But you know what? Let, let's just see what this is about. Rin's literally like the eyes have rolled over and it's just <laughs> yeah, yeah, eyes it's right now. Yeah, yeah. All right, so you are looking around in the area. I w- um, you've been there about half an hour. You've just been told you're meeting a contact here. That's all you know. Roll perception. Okay. Uh, really, this one? Yeah. Okay, let's see. Uh, six plus your perception. Oh, yeah. um, perception. Let's see. That is going to help that much. Real quick. I missed it. It's been a while. Where's my perception at? Let's see it. Oh, uh, is it plus one? Uh, seven? Seven. Okay. Well, that helped a lot. Yeah. So uh, you're looking around. You're looking around. You're just not seeing anyone. You eventually just kind of like cross your arms a little uh, frustrated. And then directly behind you, there's knock knock. Hey, what's going on? Hey, <laughs> have you seen anybody around here? Uh, yeah, I see lots of people around here. I see like animals. I see like lizards. I see you right now. I see you too. What's your name? Uh, my name's Knock Knock. Describe yourself to him right now. What you look like? Yeah, so Knock Knock is a half orc fighter. He's n- kind of a uh, s- slim build, like athletic build. He's not like this big, uh, grotesque, like half orc or whatever. He's well put together. Um, he has a, a quiver in his back with just uh, two arrows. He um, has both his uh, canines tusks, I guess. Yeah, yeah like kind of filed down pretty low. And he's just very happy to see you. <laughs> Does he have the ears? Oh, yeah. Uh, he also has like um, like pointed ears. Um, pointed ears for a half orc, I guess. Mm. Which would be a little different. So Ren's like, so I don't mean to take, like, don't take this offense, but what kind of name is Knock Knock? What, what, what do you mean what type of name is Knock Knock? I mean, I've never heard that kind of name before in my life. Oh, it's a great name. It, it ha- it's a name that's so great it comes by twice. <laughs> so is it like a family origin? Like, did you have a grandfather named Knock Knock? No, it was, I mean, it's kind of a long story. I don't know if you got time to hear it. Oh, yeah, I got plenty of time. You got plenty of time oh, yeah. to hear it? I don't know. Uh, I want to roll an insight yeah. to see, like, because he doesn't share this story with, like, Right, everyone. so how much would you trust this person? Yeah, like, how much mm-hmm. does he trust him? Uh, not very well. <laughs> uh, I would say you're unsure. You just can't get a read on him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and he's half-elf, right? Correct. Yeah. Um, right? You're half-elf, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Or a high-elf. So. High-elf. I'm yeah. sorry. So you are full-elf. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so you would recognize him okay. as a high-elf. Gotcha. Certainly not from your woods. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll explain it later. All right. Well, since you're here, I'm looking for somebody to help me out. We're trying to find a contact I'm looking for. Do you know of anything that's happening around here? Like, happening like what? What do you mean? Like well, bad stuff happening? I can't, I can't tell you everything. What? Because I'm just, I'm just trying to be very secretive about stuff because, you know... Like, Ren is, like, sitting there trying to, like, figure out, like, how to not talk about it because he wants it for himself. But he's, like, trying to make sure that, like, Knock Knock is, like, helps him out. Just so you know, you've been sent here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I'm the contact. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, if you knock, you got to know the code. (laughs) 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 Like, we both don't want to give up the same situation. You know what I mean? Totally. It's just like, well, I'm waiting for someone, too. So maybe we can just wait together. All right. That sounds good to me, too. Cool. 
Perfect. So you guys wait there for about five minutes and just kind of keep looking back and then <laughs> want to look away and want to look back. And then you hear bells ringing, church bells ringing oh, from bells. the direction of the town. What do you do? Did you hear that? Yeah, I heard that. You want to go there right now? I want to go there right now. Me too. Let's go. Yeah. And you start running towards the town. Okay. Now let's go to Shaka. You have seen this shard of obsidian. In the middle of Nightstone is this giant black obelisk. And it has been known to respond to very powerful magics, but only for a moment to show a glimmer of this ancient text up and down its surface. People suspect it's powerful, but they can't move it. It resists all attempts to dig it up, and it resists any magics to move it. And people can't quite decipher these texts. And your patron wants to know more. You keep seeing these visions. You keep being pushed towards it. So you are currently seated on this tall hill overlooking the village, waiting as night is beginning to fall. Because it's rumored that you can best see it at night and use your vision to perhaps see some of the magics emanating off it. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Okay. So I'm kneeling down. Um, I, I sort of have a map in front of me that sort of has sort of the equivalent of like blueprints, right? Because I'm trying to map out like the proper way. I have like the the um, patterns of the of the patrol, of the guards. So I can kind of sneak my way through. So I'm trying to essentially plan a bit of stealth, not because I'll go to jail or something, but because I don't want anyone else to be with me right. when I get there. And if I do unveil it, I don't want anybody to see it. So I'm plotting out a little. A little stealth. Uh, roll perception. Stealth Actually, roll perception three times over an hour as you've been doing uh, observations and drawings and notes. Okay. Not good. Not good. All right. So that is 17. Okay. So you get two that weren't great and then a 17. Okay. So here's what happens. Over the hour, you're being a little pedantic about everything. You keep rewriting streets and erasing a street that's not quite right. And so you're focused too much on the little details. And then just as you start to pull back a bit, because just as you like finish that last little house, that last little lane, and you realize that there's no one on the streets. It's very quiet. Some There's lights in the windows. Uh, it looks pretty normal, but there's no one in the streets. Yeah, but I'm kind of an over preparer, so I still want to fin I still want to finish my map. So so I still try to finish it before I head out. But I do start to head toward the obelisk at this point. Okay, so you are finishing your map. Let's hold there for one mo moment and we're gonna jump to Ash Ashburn, correct? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, would you describe yourself as well? Yes. So she is a half elf around uh, sixteen years old. She's wearing um what looks like uh, a coat or a, a ball gown that she had sliced um, open to, to create a jacket. And so it's really, really fancy, but she's like punked it up with like studs and um, all sorts of like found objects. Um, and her right hand is a clawed talon to about her elbow. Um, her hair is really like big and uh, sits as a curly mop on top of her head. And uh, she has tick marks on her pants um, that don't represent kills, but represent good days. <laughs> That's nice. I like yeah. it. So you are here because you keep seeing visions. Every time you look in a mirror, not every time you look in a mirror, but many times when you look in a mirror, usually when you catch it just out of the corner of your eye, where it's just like you pass a reflection, mm -hmm. you'll see yourself with your old hand. And in the background is this obsidian obelisk in the middle of Nightstone. And you'll look back and it's gone, but it's been haunting you enough to have driven you to this place. And you are climbing up the back of a hill because you wanted to get a better view on the town before you went into it or decided what you were going to do next. You kind of just came out of, inst out of instinct without even that much of a plan. And as you walk up the back of the hill, you see a man seated in all white, correct? All white. Yep. And um, with like a huge piece of paper in front of him, just this <laughs> giant, like he must have unfolded it eight times and he's just got lines and fountains and 
notes everywhere. Hey. Hey. Oh. Do you do you live on this mountain? Of course I don't live on the mountain. Who are you? Oh, hey, um, my name is Ashbourne. You can call me Ash. And I extend my left hand to shake, and I'm kind of hiding my right. Okay, so, so this is not the top of my hand. Okay. Uh, yeah. I go and shake her hand, and I say, uh, my name is Sharafka. You can call me Shaka for short. Uh, and I'm just enjoying a nice night out here. Just enjoying it with my random map. <laughs> just to map out the, I'm just trying to map out the stars and the constellations. I'm really into astronomy. This is so good. And I um, dive down to kind of look at your map closer. And as I dive down, you see my, my bag shake a little bit like there's something inside of it. What is in your bag? Who are what? you? What? What? Were you sent here? By my dreams. Okay. You're one of those people. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Can 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 like you just share what's in your bag and I kind of reach a bit for my dagger because I'm not sure who you are at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, and then out of my bag pops this tiny little fox. It looks like a little kit, and it just kind of like stares at you. Oh, he's so adorable. <laughs> Tears <laughs> are coming. <laughs> 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 on onto my map even let's try to keep it off the map oh my god <laughs> what is his name uh, his name's chips what up chips i reach out to a little pound like gives me a little pound <laughs> oh, oh you're so nice um um you have um a part of your map there's um there's a sh a shard did you draw this um yes i did i did okay i will come clean yeah i'll, I'll come clean okay this is not the stars obvious because there's roads there's roads and buildings. there's like a house over there <laughs> you, you were fooled by that i don't know I, no. um yeah so no i'm map i'm mapping out the uh, town and i'm just you know i'm just into architecture you know i just want to map out the town because i like keeping maps and yes there's an obelisk in the center of the town I don't, there's something about you that I trust, like, implicitly. <laughs> like, I look at you, and I just trust you so much. Okay. So I've been, and I kind of, like, am touching you now. I have been having these nightmares, these terrible dreams, and, and you drew something from my dream. Wait, is the obelisk in your dream? Something like it. Have you dreamt about any messages from it at all? It... It, it's like me, how I used to be, and I kind of show you my hand. Oh, whoa. Oh. Yeah, that's a normal response to that. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm no, sorry. We, we all have our, I, I apologize. No, I, hey, it's cool. Like you're, you're, you're being so nice and you're opening up and, and plus Chips is here. Chips! <laughs> um, okay. Just a little back flip and then jumps back into your bag. <laughs> okay, so... Um, I'm curious about the obelisk as well. Um, so why don't we, why, why don't you say we team up? Yeah. We yeah. We're the dynamic to... duo now. Okay. Robin. We, yeah. We, we, Chips we, looks out of the bag and like, just looks at you <laughs> and frowns, <laughs> oh. shakes his little fox head and then dives back into the bag. Chips sees how it is. <laughs> It's our new friend, Chips. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Chips is We're not happy. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's like threesome, not duo. We're like a like a like a triforce. Yeah, exactly, a, a triforce. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So let's let so like I already mapped out some some, some ways this that like really we can good. get in. Yeah. So like sneaky through the back way. Sneaky through the back way, not yeah, quite yeah. representative of the hours of labor I put in the map, but yeah, sneaky through the back way. <laughs> sure. All right. You guys are going so in. We yeah. A, we have right, going excellent. In. So as you start to descend the hill and the sun is coming down, you hear the church bells beginning to ring. Perrin, earlier in the day. You had arrived in a three-wagon caravan. This is a little traveling, not quite a circus, right? Kind of a traveling show. Each wagon kind of 
unfolds and there's little curtains in them and one will do like a puppet show for kids and one's like juggling and acrobatics and like like little kind of you know like this like half a dozen of you right and it's run by this old dwarf named Girthen Durthmore sorry Guthrin Durthmore old friend of yours cantankerous used to be a strong man will sometimes put on the act if there's enough people and he's had enough to drink, right? And you are just getting ready for your show. What does Perrin do to get ready for a show? Uh, so Perrin is sitting in his half little, uh, he's got a portion of the wagon. It's only, it's only about four feet high. And so he just sits in there and there's a little mirror that used to be like, someone's eyeglass or something like that. <laughs> and he, so he's sitting there and he looks at himself. He goes, P.U., you're quite delectable. <laughs> Just so, so very wonderful. We are going to make so much money. We are going to get so much information. Here in Waterdeep, it is a wonderful place coming up north. Or you're almost at Waterdeep. You're currently yes. in Nightstone, so you Nightstone. Might, but you are on your yes. way to Waterdeep. That's yes. where the caravan's going next. Suburban Waterdeep. <laughs> 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 Suburban Waterdeep has all the good money. There are great schools here. Excellent. And as you're doing that, there's like a bam, bam, bam on the uh, back of the wagon. Well, hello. Hey. And it's oh, Guthrie. Guthrie. How are you today, sir? And he steps inside and hunches, even for a dwarf, he hunches down a little bit and he closes the door behind him. And he's like, I'm not sure about this place. What is there not to be sure about? There are people that need to be entertained. And he pulls open the curtain. And as he looks out, like, there's people milling about, but they're just kind of, like, aimless. Like, they're not looking up at each other when they pass. They're not waving at each other. They're just kind of, they look sad. These people are dying to be entertained. Look at them. They just walk around wandering aimlessly. There is no joy in their lives. We must bring the joy, Gunther. I would like you to roll persuasion. Oh boy. Uh, 13. Nice. All right. Yeah. Um, oh, actually, uh, yeah, 13. So he looks out the window again. He looks back at you and just sighs, you know. All right. Well, be ready to go on soon. We're going to do this early. Paranandabo is always ready to perform. <laughs> All right, excellent. All right. He walks out. And what is your act? What do you do? Uh, so tonight is going to be a fusion uh r and b jazz set um from from the south, so it'll be like uh you know we we used to call these places where we had these taverns juke junk. <laughs> <laughs> nice nice so, uh, <laughs> so i I sit and I perform a little all right so like the back of the wagon like if you're little so you basically live if you were in a u-haul you live in that part above yes, right yes, right the, yes the so, little alcove yes at the top and on the front of it there's like the little balcony that can just like fold out yes. so you can stand and like be up and right. above so everyone can right. see you so you pull the lever there's a big huge wham bam punk right. and you step out and there is no one you guys have some torches lit but the town is completely empty and night is just falling. Guthrin is in the front pacing back and forth and he just looks at you and he's like, I think they're all in the inn. Hang on. Wait, I'll get them. I'll get them. And he goes running off towards the inn. All right. So I, um, I'd like to roll perception to see if I can find anyone else around. Totally. Um, I didn't find it. That would be a natural one. Yes, a natural one. <laughs> okay, so you are up on this little, you got about 10 feet in the air, right? You're looking around and you're looking around and you're not seeing anything. And all of a sudden you hear a growl, low, guttural, wet, almost as if there were three creatures in the same throat just growling on top of each other somewhere behind you somewhere just out of view because you can't see over the wagon. 
I didn't believe that I asked for background singers. <laughs> These are not my type. What do you do? I um, I'd like to cast. Can I cast light? Um, yeah, I'd like to cast light just so I can see see if I can see around the corner. Totally. So you cast light in this glowing orb of like yellow light just kind of fills around in all the crevices of the wagon and all of a sudden you see these red eyes and then you see a wolf whose mouth is filled with fire. And we're going to hold right there. So... Salise, yes. you are now arriving in the town. You're basically just coming right up the front road. The sun is setting and you're hearing bells, church bells ringing. And it's not like, you know, it's anxious because you've heard a lot of church bells ringing. This is definitely someone pulling like as a warning. There's something going on in the church. Absolutely. All right. Well, I can't ignore that. I'm heading toward the church. All right. So you just start galloping head yep. first you start galloping you pull around a bend there's trees everywhere then all of a sudden there's a small girl in the middle of the road oh roll a dexterity save oh boy oh um three okay so you try to stop you're able to dig the horse's front legs in and like just pull as hard as you can it stops just before the girl but you go over you're flying over her and as you do she just reaches up and she touches you, and you stop. And she just turns her fingers, mm. and she gently lowers you to the ground. Are you all right? Yes. Are, are you all right? No. My friends are being hurt. They're being hurt in the town. I was on my way to the town. What's happening? There's a bad man in there. He's very strong, and he'll hurt you. And she pulls a locket off of her neck. And there's like a little gold heart with a single rose petal inside it. This will keep you safe. And she holds it up for you. I kneel and let her put it on me, but, but don't you need it? And she puts it on you and you feel a surge of holy energy protecting you. Roll a religion. Oh, that's so much better. Um, 17. Okay. So you recognize her. This, you know that this is how the goddess Lyra would show herself. It's a, she's a minor demigod. She's worshipped by people. Uh, she's also called Our Lady of Joy. She's worshipped by those who just enjoy parties and festivals and joyous occasions, ceremonies, graduations, that kind of thing. My friends are in there and they're hurt. Will you help them? Yes, Lady Lyra. This will keep you safe. But if you attack him... The magic will break. And then she waves, and she's just gone. But I need to attack him if he's hurting people. <laughs> I, I, I ponder this as I get on the horse and start <laughs> riding back. You jump back up, and you're barreling into a town. You two, as you're coming, as you're running in, see her coming up the road. You're basically going to intersect as you go towards the town. So did they see like when she fell off the horse at this point? Or? No, no, she's coming around the um, corner. So you didn't see any of that, but you just see this uh, um, an armored woman on this, you know, horse just barreling down the road. So Ren is like running with knock knock, and he, like they stop. He's like, wait, 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 wait. Do you, can you fight? Can I fight? What do you mean? Right now? You want to fight right now? Wait, 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 not yet. Why? Not yet. What? I can't hit you. <laughs> Don't hit me. But you see that person right there? I can't hit that person over there. Well, I can't attack her. You now are seeing them, and you'll be upon them in, like, two rounds as you're galloping. You just see, like, a half-orc and an elf just kind of, like, shouting back and forth at each other and pointing at you and shouting back at each other. <laughs> no, this like, this sounds you know. like a bad joke. <laughs> um, so then Ren is, like, looking, and he's like, maybe we should approach her. Yeah, like, fast. Let's run real fast at her. Run around away. <laughs> so then they get they get closer. I got my sword ready. Yeah. So they're now running towards the so the road as you're coming this way. So they'll intersect you. What are you doing? I, I pull the horse. Where where are you going? What why are you running at me? Animal handling. Ooh, that's okay. better. Uh, eighteen. Yeah, you're yeah you you've been on horses. All of your life. That thing comes right around, lands almost directly between them. So as it comes down, it kind of separates them. 
and now you're all facing each other. Well, we heard some like bells ringing. So They're still walked, going off, by the way. Yeah, we, we hear the bells ringing up there. That's where we're going towards. Yeah, you know the old saying, hear a bell, run like hell. Yeah. <laughs> but usually it's run the other way. We, we heard it, so we had to go for it. No way. Dinner bells, yeah. song bells, <laughs> like, isn't there a flower that has bells in it? I don't know. All right, so that's where I'm going. Are you going to? Yes. All right, so all of us won't fit on the horse, though. Okay, we could draw straws, but yeah. it's your horse, so I think maybe you should <laughs> ride it too. The horse is looking nervous, by the way. Like, you could coax him in, but he does not want to go any closer to the town. Okay. Well, I think I think my horse is fine with staying here. We should just all go on foot. Let's go. All right. Cool. Let's do it. Yeah. So you guys are all walking up. You guys are coming from the opposite side. Mm -hmm. So you've now gotten to the wall on the opposite side. It's a walled town, and there's a uh, a connection to a bridge to another part that's got like a little keep in it, and there's a river that goes around the entire thing. But all the doors are open. All the gangplanks are down. There's no one manning the walls, and you guys are just right at the edge right now. Where did all the people go? Yeah, I'm really nervous about this. Uh, while I was designing this map, yeah, you know, it was with the intention that there the would be people. Yeah, you drew this like guy. It was so cute by the door. I mean, I am an artiste. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like my stick figure is a legendary. Um, but yeah, like the fact that there's no one here worries me a bit. I'll protect um, you. Thank you very much. And so I, I walk in front, and I'm heading to the. The open door. Okay, so you guys head in. There's a wide open road at this entrance, and yeah. it heads kind of into the center of the town. And as you're walking up, you see a couple very brightly painted wagons in kind of this semicircle. And there's some torches lit, and there is a halfling standing on top of one of the wagons in a bright coat, I would imagine, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I imagine like little tiny Sergeant Peppers. Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? right? And so, but and, and he's like, he's kind Cast light, obviously. You reckon it's a it's a very common a yeah. spell, and you can see the tip of his finger glowing as he waves it over. And then you see this creature, this dog with fire in its mouth and fire in its eyes coming around and snarling and put its paws up onto the wagon. Initiative. You as well, please. Nine. I steal someone's pen. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. All right. So what'd you get? Five. All right. Uh, nine. Excellent. So Ashburn, go ahead first. What are you doing? So um, I say um, chips, attack mode, just so he gets out of my bag. <laughs> <laughs> Jumps out. <laughs> right. Like, just like ready. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I take out my uh, modified longbow and I try firing at the creature. Okay. Roll to hit. That was a crit fail. <gasps> okay, I would like you to roll a dexterity save. Okay, dokie. Oh man, uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, you fire an arrow and yep. it strikes PU in the leg. I would like you to roll damage. <laughs> oh no. Yep. Do I hear? Gave the, you two outs. <laughs> oh god! Do I hear the yelp? <laughs> oh no! Man. I'm so strong. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh no, that's fine. Four. Okay, so uh, a bolt bites into the back of your leg. You just like a twang, and then a zoom as it bites it. But you turn, and there's uh, you know, uh, you know <laughs> yeah, looking very upset. <laughs> so S sorry. Well, uh, this is th a terrible way to greet someone. <laughs> I must say. And the fire wolf, or whatever the hell it is, sees that as well, drops down from the wagon and starts towards you two. Shaka, what are you See, doing? See, that's what we were trying to do. We were trying to divert the attention. Of the you, you could have chosen a different way. <laughs> <laughs> Please. All right, so I, um, I cast um, I cast Eldritch Blast. All right. Sure. So, Roll to hit. 20. Oh, a natural yeah. a 20? All right. So you just steady yourselves. And what do you do? How does this work? All right. So so 
I kind of get in that uh, action movie pose. Like I take out the bow, <laughs> like, like like this. Everything's moving for me in slow motion. <laughs> you know, I have this theme music going on. You're the best and, around. No one's ever gonna get you down. And I just nail, I just nail the fire creature right between the eyes. Nice. I would like you to roll double damage. Mm. Wait, no, uh, your... no, no, no. Uh, roll the damage. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Straight. Yep. What is it normally? Uh, it is the it D8. Excellent. Yeah. yeah, so roll two of them. And then add the whatever Seven, it is to it. Five, twelve. Nice. Okay, so you just blast this creature like right in the face. And it leans back and you can hear it yelp and it kind of looks at you. But it limps a little bit, but it's still coming. Perrin, what are you doing? Uh, it just sends the heck out of it. Right. <laughs> I'm going to uh, hobble. Yeah, I'm going to hobble over. And, <laughs> well, so how far away are they from me? Not far. Probably about sixty feet. And now the creatures maybe uh, twenty feet away from you. Okay. So I am going to cast uh, shatter. Okay. On on the creature. Excellent. So what's the save? The save is thirteen. Okay. Go ahead and roll and roll damage. Uh, it is all right. eight, eight. So that's uh, sixteen plus seven, twenty-three. Oh, shoot. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, the, so it got blasted in the face, and it went down <laughs> for a second. And you thought you had it, and then it started to rise back up. And you're mm-hmm. like, oh shit! As it leans back, and shatter goes off, and just rips it apart there's just fire and blood and guts and then just a pile of nothing and everything's quiet except for those bells you three come around the corner just in time to see this fire wolf rip in half and a little like like fireball kind of burst up from its shattered spine and then you see these people oh what was Ah! that 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 was some spell work that was cool. It, the thing exploded. True. Oh my god, that was amazing. Hi, I'm Ashburn. You can call me Ash. You're so dope. Oh my god. Uh, so my name is Perrin Underbo. Uh, you can call me PU for short. PU. But PU right now stands for perfectly unbearable pain. <laughs> oh, oh, and I, uh, I'm i going to take out the arrow yep. out of his leg. Wait. Uh, roll dexterity. Wait, uh, on, too he'll, late. <laughs> he'll bleed out. Let me, let me help. And so I'm mid um, taking it oh, out nice. and I hear you. What? He could, it could get real bad if you just pull the arrow out. Let me help. Okay. Roll medicine. <laughs> I've got cure wounds. Oh, nice. Even, yeah, even better. Uh, cure wounds. Well, just uh, roll how much damage uh, oh. you heal. Because you don't have to, like, you know, you don't have to hit him or anything. Um, I heal nine. Nice. So the arrow slides out. Hurts a bit. Yeah. But you're healed instantly. And you can feel the warm glow <laughs> of tear. How does, how does it work with tear? Like, how would that magic work? With tear, it's like doing this was a just act. Because even though I don't know these people, there's an injured halfling bleeding in front of me and I can't just ignore that. So so Tear is Tear is pleased with me and I feel the glow of this locket as well. It's like you did a good thing. You didn't you I didn't attack anyone yet, so it still likes me. <laughs> as you put your hand to your locket, you pull away all of a sudden there's a weight and you pull away and there are five more in your hand. I I guess good deeds do pay. Um then I'll offer the lockets to the others. And you guys see this. You see her put her hand, you know, hand to her own locket, and then five more appear in her hand. What is this locket for? You're so magic. Yeah. Best friend locket. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm not a fan of necklaces. You gotta tell me what this is for. <laughs> it's for protection. It's divine protection. Where'd you get it from? The Lady Lyra. You met her? Yes. You just gave me chills right now. Yeah. I have like goosebumps. Hi, I'm Ash. I'm Celise. Celise, so nice to meet you. Wait, did did you know that there would be a fire beast here? Like, is that no. why you have the locket? No, we heard the bells. Oh. And we were heading toward the bells, and then we saw you explode that thing. Okay. The bells Wait. stop. Oh, well. 
Well, now I guess it's time to perform. Oh, yeah. Perform what? You sing? Well, I sing, I dance. I tell great and magnificent stories. Wow. The best bards do all the best work. Wow. Hold on. Did we not just notice the bells stop? Just the bells have stopped so that we can perform. Whoa. No. Uh, Roll perception. <laughs> oh, not good. Okay, you're too involved in this argument right now. <laughs> what are the rest of you uh, oh, doing? Okay, so you can perform all you want. Ash and I are on a quest. So, yeah. So Ren is like uh, looking at the town. He's like, what is that? And he like gets really close and he's like holding on to it. He's like, I'm sorry, but it's just like so beautiful. My hand? <laughs> <laughs> yes. But hi, my name is Ren. Uh, nice sir, to meet that you. Is oh, non-consensual. Hey. Yeah, um, <laughs> my is name's going? Ash. You are you are so nice. It, this is perfect. Like, can I take it off? No, no, this is me. This is a, it's, I'm attached to it. Can I cut it off? No. Why? <laughs> oh. oh, sorry. Just... No, it um, no. it's and I it just moves like a hand. It's not real gold. It, it's just. You know, oh, it's just yellow, and then, man. like <laughs> Ren gets all sides, like, oh, okay, never mind. Well, I, my name is Ren. Nice to meet you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to cut her hand off. It's well, cool. He's I mean, not the first person. See, she said that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> knock knock is uh, like clearing off a little space in front of uh, Perrin's, uh, like where he's gonna perform, <laughs> right? And like he, he's sitting with his legs, like low, legs folded, and he's like, just to let you know. I uh, really enjoy, if you're going to tell stories, uh, put some uh, talking animals. A lot of people learn through animals and or puppets. Uh, and then he pulls out like a puppet from his bag. <laughs> it's, like, it's like sometimes it's easier for some people to learn through puppets. I don't know. I don't know if you want to incorporate this, but sometimes it works. Uh, everyone always wants to add more things. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Young we'll see. Young As you guys are talking, there's a glow. Just over the horizon, just over toward the center of town, would be just around a house. There's this soft green glow. What's what's over there? I'm a little scared. Why are you scared? It's just green. But it's glowing. Exactly. You've got a talon for a hand. Yeah. True. But it's not glowing. It's just regular. Regular glow. Fair. <laughs> I should I, go towards it. I'm going to go see what it is. Yeah, I I think it's of interest, um, but I do have something else that I need to go do. Um, so I don't know if I can join you on this green glowing quest. According to your map, that would be the direction of the obelisk. Correction. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently my GPS is off. Uh, and I will be joining you on the glowing green quest. Well, Everyone headed? I, I, I sense that that Tyr wants me to go that way, even though the bells have stopped and none of us are paying attention to that. Did, did you give all of us the lockets? Yes. Okay. And so everyone has a locket of protection. As mm -hmm. you guys put them on, you feel just a rush of warmth and comfort and safety. Like you just, I mean, you're all tense. This is very tense. That was a devil dog that exploded in fire and gusts. But you know what? It's okay. You're going to be okay. Everyone feels really safe right now. It's like a warm hug. Yeah. Yeah. Rin's Don't like, actually hug me. I won't. Okay. Ren's like sitting there like, this feels really good. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you okay? I'm good. This is perfect. <laughs> this was great. Thanks for giving me this. This is what I get for leaving the temple. So you all walk around this alley and back out, and then the town opens up again, and there is the obelisk on this low hill glowing with this green light that seems to kind of flash from within. And as it does, you see little etchings of maybe words, pictures, it just feels old. Something you've never seen before, but you know it feels old. And circling it are two more of these hounds. Mm. Oh no. Well, well, I think we, well, I will tell you guys that I've, I've had, you know, some, some uh, history with the obelisk. And Ash here has had visions of the obelisk. Yeah. So we, we got to take out these hounds. Are you guys with us? Yes. I guess. These hounds are uh, making me thirsty. So we must finish with them so I can get to ale. So whatever it needs to happen, <laughs> let's just do it. I like how this guy talks. It's so fancy. It's super fancy. It's pretty fancy. Yeah. You think someone just lost these dogs, though? 
Like, do they belong to someone? Do I can I check. I'm going to try to do an animal handling on the dog. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you roll animal handling on the dog. It's made of fire. But, but it could have tags. You don't uh, know. I'm just rolling so low. Mm. So very low. This is kind of your thing. Yeah. To, uh, yeah. Where is it? Except nine. Nine. Okay. So how um how are you how are you speaking to this? I have um like jerky in my bag, right. <laughs> and so I have my hand with jerky, and I'm sort of creeping up to the dogs. Okay. And- okay so you all have like tried and started to plan, right? You all got to the edge yep. of these of these houses. You all kind of lean back into the shadows, look at each other, and immediately your heads went to together, and you're all planning. And none of you notice Ashburn just creeping <laughs> towards the dogs. You get about halfway there by the time you guys recognize it, and the dogs have now turned. They both noticed you, and they're coming towards you. And f- first you're like, oh, yay, yeah, yay, okay. they're coming. Oh, and we're very friends. quickly you realize, no, this is bad oh, no, oh, no. initiative. <laughs> Twelve. 14. 14. 11. Three. 22. Three. 22. Can you help? Can, can yeah, you help yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, perfect. I just can't yeah. do it. I should have I'm just going to, my brain's going to so, fall. What did uh, Salise get? Twelve. Twelve. Ren. Three. Perrin. Twenty-two. Um, Count's got eighteen. Three. Ashburn. Uh, eleven. What are you doing and first, parent? Fourteen. So I am going to cast Bane. Okay. On uh, on these hounds. And how does Bane work? Bane is uh, they've got to do a charisma saving throw of thirteen. Okay. Otherwise, they take D four damage as up to three creatures. Excellent. So all right. They succeeded in their saving throw. Uh, unfortunately. So what does that so what does that mean? Do they take any damage? No, they don't take any damage. Uh, any other effects? No other effects. Okay, so it, dis, describe how you cast this. So uh, I look at them and I say, sorry, I don't play with strays. You must be gone now, like your brother before you. <laughs> Usually that works. Yeah. In this, but you just kind of put your hand up and nothing. You feel them kind of push through it, and they're still charging towards her. Who's up next? Uh, the hounds. All right. Bill. So they stop right in front of you. One of them begins to circle off to the right, and the other one, you see the fire grow in its eyes and mouth, and a cone of fire explodes at you. I need a dexterity save. Um, eight. Okay. Oh dear. Mm-hmm. I'm switching dice. Dice jail. You take 16 points oh of damage gosh. as you are just struck with this blast of fire that rolls you onto your side. You're, you know, you're not on fire, but oh boy, that hurt. Oh, <laughs> and I'm just like trying to like roll and like take it out there's dirt it works just dirt, yep. yeah mm-hmm. stop drop and roll you've yep you're well yep. prepared yeah <laughs> <laughs> who's next uh ash ashburn all right okay so i so as i am on the floor figuring out um the fire situation i am going to um put my hands in the dirt and then look up to the sky and cast Hail of Thorns. Nice. Okay. And Hail of Thorns works how? It is. Um, I just roll a d10 piercing, and it's the next time you hit a creature with a ranged weapon attack before the spell ends. The spell nice. creates a rain of thorns that sprouts from your ranged weapon or ammunition. Nice. In addition to the normal effect of the attack. Is it a bonus? Uh, is it a bonus spell? Like, can you cast it and then attack, or do you have to wait until next round? Um, I'm not sure. It'll say under casting time. Casting time. One bonus action. Okay, so you so yes. you just put your fingers against your bow, yeah. and instantly, like you see little like roots grow out of the back of it where the fletching is. So you know yeah. it's ready. Roll to hit. All right. 
eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so it strikes like right in its front paw, okay. and then the roots kind of burst out around it. Roll damage. Uh, ten. Nice, and roll damage for the arrow as well. Four. Nice. Okay, and, and your dexterity bonus is like plus two, right? Yes. All right. So you did sixteen points of damage that slams into its paw and pins it to the ground nice. for a moment, so it holds okay. it in in place. Who's next? Uh, Salise. All right, I'm gonna go for the one that's pinned down. Nice. I'll roll with advantage because it's pinned down. Okay, that's adding. Just roll a two d twenties and take the highest one. I got a nat 20. Nice. Ooh. Ooh. So yes. you run up. Okay, um, you're going to, there's no way you're not going to take its head off. So you, so <laughs> describe how this goes down. All right. So I'm, I'm running sword out and, you know, I look around, notice the one's pinned down and just do like an acrobatic leap up and just smack it right on the neck. Just clean through. There's like, yep. there's a, and then shunk, and the thing just collapses to the ground. Like the knees buckle a second after the head hits, right? And I just see the head rolling away. <laughs> yeah, it kind of rolls. In fact, it gets the attention of its friend, right, who looks and then growls and turns around to face you. Who's next? Uh, Shaka. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to cast Ray of Enfeeblement. On the creature, and that would that means it uh, can do less damage, half and, damage, right? And rolls with a uh, disadvantage, correct? Um, or is that just half damage? It does Part not is half say damage. disadvantage. Okay, it just says it does half damage. What's the saving throw? Uh, constitution, and I have to beat a. Uh, does not. State. What's sorry, What's your uh, spell save DC? Oh, um, it'd be on the next page of the yeah. Top. Probably, I, th I think it's 13. I just want to make yeah. sure. Ready the next one? There you go. Ah, 14. 14. Up, oh, see? You one extra. 14. And I wrote a natural one, so it didn't matter. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they take how much damage? Um, they oh, no, no. Take I'm, damage, I'm sorry. They, they just do, they half, do damage. half damage. Perfect. So yeah. you, this, like, grayish ray kind of comes out of your finger and strikes the a creature, and you see it buckle under its own weight. And it's unsteady and looks a little scared for the first time. Like the the flames kind of flicker in its eyes. Who's next? Rin. So Rin is like looking at like you know the creature and it's like him up. It's like this is my time. He pulls up the light crossbow. He's like this is my time now. <laughs> Roll um, again. Okay. So uh, this uh, my time is now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so is it this nice. one? Oh, yes. Okay. All right. Fourteen. Fourteen is oh, gonna sure. hit. Well, actually, oh, plus, maybe fourteen uh, plus. Uh, let me see. 17. 17? Yeah, 17 is definitely okay. going to hit. Roll damage. Ah. Okay, so... so same thing? It'll be your weapon. Yeah, it'll be, your, weapon. It'll be uh, your... The die 8 for the bow, and then plus your dex, okay. your dexterity bonus. Okay. So, let's see. Uh, 7. Nice. Dexterity bonus. Plus 1. Plus 1. Uh, 8. Nice. So, it just sinks deep into its shoulder, and now the creature is starting to look panicked. It's like, oh, uh, sorry about that. What are you apologizing for? <laughs> <He's> so sweet. <laughs> 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 so polite. Uh, your fox, by the way, yeah. is like, you know, is like like going through the motions, like standing right next to you, not approaching this thing, no. but like, but like flexing and like roaring and like, you know, biting and growling like yeah. it would. Like if you came any closer, <laughs> I got <Threat>. you. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, it's a knock knock. It's right. uh, knock knock's turn. Yeah. So knock knock actually sees uh, the fox and, Chips. uh, uh, chips and uh, turns to the fox and like, knock knock, and then like in his head goes, who's there? Like, because you, know, you know, you know, the fox kind of turns. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like needle, needle, needle. Who? He's like need a little help, and he goes like running in to like protect Ashburn and uh, pulls out both of his uh, arrows, his iron arrows, and like tries to stab the hound awesome. uh, right in front of her. Roll to hit. Uh, so 17 and 11. The 17 is going to hit, and actually the 11 is going to hit as well. So both of them hit, okay. roll damage. Uh, four and five. Yeah, that's going to do it. So you just, this thing is like worried and looking around, and you just get it right in the back of the neck. Just, just describe what you do. Uh, yeah, so 
right in the back of the neck. Like, well, so I, it's like, like turned eye. away because like it got distracted. So you got a nice shot right onto its bar, right onto the okay. back. Okay, yeah. so he uh, stabs. Uh, he, he takes both the arrows and like stabs the back, and it goes limp. And like he kind of like shakes it like that, and his jaw just goes up and down. And he like turns at the para. And he's just like puppets, man. I love <laughs> 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 It just slides off. Super hard. It's like right in Ash's face. (laughs) And they're both taken care of. And now there's just this glowing, like 10 foot tall, 3 foot wide obelisk on this hill in front of you. And no one, no townspeople, no other noise. Roll a perception, all of you. Anyone who gets above 15. Nope. 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 16. 16? Yeah. You're the only one. Yeah. Okay, so you... Maybe it's how you're on. Maybe it's the alignment of your little gold ears. Maybe they just pick it up. There's the faintest little bit of music coming from the inn on the other side of town. So Ren is like, hears it and starts like walking, like just aimlessly walking like towards it. And like, I guess just trying to figure out what that could be. And he's like, that sounds beautiful. I love that music. And he's just like walking like in a weird trance kind of state. Just like this, like walking back and forth. Excuse me, Mr. Elf. Yeah? Excuse me, Mr. Elf. Where are you going? That way. Why? Do you not hear that? No. No, there is nothing. Wait, I'm the only one who hears that? I can hear music. It's in your head. As he brings it up and you kind of move a little closer, you all hear just the faintest. But there's definitely music coming from the A couple uh, string instruments, maybe even a drum, you know. Oh, no, I hear it now. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You hear it? Yeah, it's coming yeah, yeah. from that way. Okay, I hear it, but yeah. but I need to investigate the obelisk. Um, so like, and, I need to and try Ash to figure is out hurt. The <laughs> Ash is okay. Oh, and my like Ash front is, is like still kind of singed oh, and yeah, like yeah. smoking. You're definitely hurt. Like like <laughs> part yeah. of you as part of your you know your shirt didn't get your jacket, but your shirt yeah. definitely got fused to you. You're kind of like picking parts that could be skin, oh, could yeah. be shirt, mm. might be a button. Oh, it's a button. It is a button. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we sh- we should check this out. Right. Well, come here. Let me see if I can heal you. You're such a good doctor. Oh, and dear. I like put out my belly. Stay in the tube. All right, you get a uh, five pack. Nice. Thank you. So you feel better, like uh, you know. The skin's now red and angry, right? You're not fully healed, but all but you're not also not attached to your own clothing. So yeah. It's, yeah, it's not bad. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And I'm gonna try to give you a hug, but then I remember that you said you don't want hugs. So it's like a <laughs> <laughs> I <give> you guns <laughs> instead. <laughs> yeah, like, maybe. Maybe once I get to know you. Okay. How old are you anyway? How old do you think I am? Twelve. Higher. 15. Well, technical age or half elf age? I'm 47. <laughs> and then, like, Ren is like, me? Well, I'm older than you. Like, I'm 17, but I'm pretty old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys are babies. What? Yeah. Uh, babies can be cool, though. <laughs> I'm a cool baby. And then Ren's like, I'm cute, though. <laughs> yeah, both of us just love you. Time is a construct. <laughs> Time to go. So, what are you all doing? Okay, I am. I'm going toward the obelisk, and like I'm trying to see what kind of magic I can use to understand the. Are you still going towards the end? Yeah, because okay. he's still hearing the music. So he's right, like, so, I think we have to go this way. All right. So, is anyone else going towards the end? I I want the guard. The dogs were guarding the obelisk, yes. so I'm at least going to look at it before totally. I go to the end. Totally. I want to go to the end. Who's but. who's who's starting off to 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 the end right now? Uh, knock knock will. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. and Red. Okay, so you guys are starting off towards the end. You two approach the obelisk first. Yeah. I assume you guys are staying with yeah. the obelisk yes. as as well. And it's just like like a swirling green pattern is crackling just like under the inside of it, as if it was a little translucent. And you could see this kind of glowing cloud almost swirling inside it. And then as soon as the light passes, it just becomes a solid again. You can't see through it all. It's just some kind of black obsidian. Wow. It's not carved or anything, but when these clouds roll over it, you can see etchings and writings and carvings inside it. Um, but they seem to move and shift. 
can I roll uh, um, to see if the um, the script matches what was in my dreams? Sure. Roll uh, insight. Insight. Okay. Did so good. Um, Twenty three. Wow. <laughs> oh, nice <Yes>. job. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this. So you kind of like you. You're right next to it, and the mm -hmm. closer you get, the clearer it becomes. Almost like if you, well, if your character knew what this was, but if you were tuning in a radio, but there are yeah. no radios. But you know, so it gets clearer as you get nearer to it, and you just kind of like reach up and place your hand on it. Right, it's just instinctual. You just place the claw hand directly on it, and you see you just snapped into this vision. You're on the edge of the shore, right along the Sword Coast, maybe fifty miles west, and there's this creature, this gigantic creature, all blackened out as if the sun is directly behind it, and you're just seeing this dark outline. But it must be. 200 feet tall in the ocean, water pouring off it like a whale falls and cascades down its side as it lifts out of the water, and then you're back to where you are. And um, that was so like startling to me to see that I like fall back after Whoa. touching it. So it looks like I touched it and then like was instantly thrown back. Are you okay? Are you okay? What just happened? Um, like she was launched backwards. Oh, yeah. Um, there's some bad, bad news, bad news coming. Can you tell us what, what you saw? I saw the, a beast. A beast? A monster. What kind of monster? Big. Okay. Big, like? Big and, a, like it was. A big and. A, yeah. Okay, a big and. Just right. a big and, and it was like the, the sun it was absorbing the light, so it was just blackness. I couldn't see what it was. It was just, it was huge. Did you get a sense of the location of where the monster was, or was it just? By some water. Okay, so on the coast. So then maybe we should go not by water. Why are you running away from this? There is no reason to run towards something Catalyst, 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 catastrophic, clismic, clismic. Well, clismic. Well, I understand that you are a coward, and that's fine. It's not that about cowardlessness, me. What is <laughs> happening? P you? Are you okay? Are you I, drunk? I, I just little teeny hand shaking. I just don't understand why, and and I'm. Like I'm, I'm shaking, yeah. but it, like my whole body is like vibrating while this is happening. I don't understand why people want to run headfirst into danger. Um, I because over. some of us know what's just. Speaking of which, yeah. the two are running headfirst into danger. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are now turning through the middle of town and coming up this hill, and there is the inn, and all the lights are on. Torches are blazing. Music can clearly be heard from it now. There's. A window smashes as a mug gets thrown through it. Someone's hanging over a bench in the front, and there's just drunken revelry everywhere, like it's Mardi Gras uh, going on here. And it's the only place that seems to have activity. You've passed other houses, and they're like open, and the doors are open, the lights are on. Some of them have pots that are bubbling on the stove, but no one's in them. They've just been abandoned. And this is a tavern? This yeah, is, um, this is like this is like their in tavern gotcha. meeting hall, you know, all in one. Gotcha. This is the place, man. <laughs> yeah, they have like food and stuff and and drinks. I'm really hungry. Today is shaping out to be a very good day. Yeah. I met all my best friends and I saved them all uh, single handedly, and now <laughs> we are about to get down in this awesome place. Yes, we should come up with a name for our group. Knock knocks. Awesome team, super fantastic. Perfect. <laughs> are you guys just walking in? Like, as you're talking, are you guys just like walking in? Oh, yeah, 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 I'm walking in. All right, excellent. We're, we're just like talking about nothing as we're walking yeah, in, too. Yeah. We're just like, yeah, there's probably at least four ways to eat a banana. Like, <laughs> without the peel, with the peel, Half peel. Like, it's just going on and on. Right. It's like the camera fades out. <laughs> <laughs> the doors swing open, 
And inside, it's just insane. Every townsperson, young, old, there's just hanging out drinking. And then children are running around giving them more and more drinks, bringing them more and more food. Like It's like all the kids are the waiters and all the adults have just lost their friggin' mind. Are these all humans? Uh, well, there's human. There's like maybe a dwarf or two, but it's mainly a human okay. settlement. So I got to get a beer. It's brought to, you know, I mean, like, they're just there. There's kids with, oh, okay. you know, beers and food and every, like, if there's, like, 12 people walking around a really well-maintained party, everyone's got appetizers, right? There's just food and drink everywhere. These kids put on amazing parties. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk to, like, one of the, the kids who brings me, like, a beer or sure. whatever. Hello, mister. Hey, what's going on? It's a party. Well, yeah, I know it's a party. What kind of party that you're throwing here? It's the best party. Well, okay. But it has to be. I want to look, be. look at another kid. Hey, what's going on? What's this party for? It's the best party. Oh, man. It has to be the best party. So, Rin, I Do you like the out. food? Okay, hold on. I got grapes and I've what? got like some cheese. Please tell me you like it. Please, please, please like it. <laughs> And he like kind of looks. Oh, he's like looking over towards like like around the corner towards like the main hall is, and he keeps looking back. He's like, "Please like the food." Uh, I'm gonna roll an insight on uh, this kid. His vibe is totally messed up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eighteen. Yeah, he's scared. Yeah, he's scared. He really wants you to like the food. Um, like a lot is riding on you liking this food. Yeah, it yeah, seems. Yeah. Uh, but I can tell that he's scared, that he's terrified. Totally scared. Okay. All the kids mm. are... With, with that role, as you're looking around, all the kids are scared. All the kids are scared. Okay. Uh, I want to take whatever he has. Yeah. Grapes and salami and some crackers and cheese. Yeah. Uh, I'll just take some crackers. Yeah. And like Cookie Monster style, like just like crumple it up in my hand and like not eat it. Be like, oh yeah, man. This is great. Like, and just like stare at Rin the entire time. <laughs> so <laughs> deception. Yeah. Ooh, uh, four. Okay. All right. So you're crumbling it, yeah. but like these trays here, so it's literally falling out of yeah. your crumbled hand back onto the tray, and there's just this pile of crumbled <laughs> crackers now. So is Rin like? Did I already like drink a beer at this point? You 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 like half into a okay. beer and you turn okay. around to see this. Okay, and so like Rin like drink doesn't drink very often. So like that one drink, he's like, knock knock. I ever told you that you're my best friend. Whoa, hold on. Hey, are you listening to this little kid? <laughs> what kid? Bring me more food. Yes. Come on. And he runs over and he's got like a pile of broken crackers and grapes and cheese. Someone else has got like uh, like mutton. You know, big like. You know, like Renaissance Fair things where it's a leg yeah, of meat. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And so uh, it's like, knock, knock, this is the life. You know, we're just having food. I'm getting gold. We're eating great. Like, what's the problem? Like, are we having issues here? Yeah, these kids are terrified, man. Oh, they're fine. Like, they're fine. Terrified. Here, it's Mr. Okay. Here's, please enjoy oh, the shit. That kid is literally please. crying. Oh, please. He's literally crying He's right now. He's asking for us to eat it. It's okay. And oh, then Rick grabs the God, just eat like, it. He's like, this is so amazing. Thank you, mister. And he Thank runs you. away. Yeah, I mean. They just uh, keep bringing things. Oh, okay. Yeah. What do yeah. You get? I'm just like filling up like the table like next to me, right. like uh, like a buffet style. Right. Like, just like, <laughs> oh, yeah, thanks. Uh, okay. And then like I'm like looking at Ren, I think, to see if he's like at all like in like he got drunk really quickly yeah <laughs> yeah well he's i mean he could just be a lightweight yeah yeah because oh, yeah. because yeah. he's eating and drinking and otherwise then getting a little tipsy he's okay yeah, yeah. uh i want to talk to one of the uh drunk people okay. like that are food's good by the way okay so this woman comes wheeling about um and she has like a sash where she's handwritten you know <laughs> you know world's best mayor <laughs> and she's like hello Hey. hey. And she's got two big, big mugs of wine. Oh. Right? Red wine, white wine. No. Would you like some? I it would We hit. have both. I see they're both in your hand. They're great. No one's whining about it, am no, I right? No, no, no. Uh, it's wine. Uh, it's, it's getting all over me. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny and large. What, what, wait, what, what's going on here? What is this party for? It's for him. For him who? Well, who else? It's great. 
Haven't you met him? And she's like kind of falling over. <laughs> no, I have no idea. Come with me. Um, and she puts her hand on your shoulder and she starts walking him this way. What are you doing? Ren's like sitting there like a little drunk. He's like, knock, knock, come this way. You, Oh, you have wine? Just let's have a party. Let's no, come. It. You must meet him. You We're love him. him. You keep saying that pronoun him, but like who him? So you round a corner and sitting like in this big chair and just filled on all sides is food and wine and whatever treasure they could amass just kind of piled up all around this guy who is basically in a loin cloth and nothing else. Oh, I'm bare sorry. Bare-chested, barefoot, bare-legged, <laughs> hanging out, just flawless from top to bottom. Hair, flawless. It's hot and muggy. There's incense burning everywhere, heavily perfumed, but he's not sweating. He's just sitting atop this pile of gluttony, and people keep bringing him wine and fruit and food, and he just kind of is like looking out over everyone, looking very entertained. To his right and left are two others, also weirdly perfect, in full armor with halberds, looking very carefully to either side. If you uh, had to compare the main guy to a celebrity, who would he be? Okay, did you ever see that? Okay, there was that guy who played Dorian Gray recently on that Showtime show. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. That guy who yeah. just looked like 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 walking marble, right? Okay. Pale but dark long hair, brilliant emeralds for eyes, perfectly just everything about him. I gotta watch this show. <laughs> Super hot. Gentlemen. Super hot. All right, and let's hold there for one second. Jump back to you all. So you're but you're by the op you've been like around it looking at it. it nothing's really changed about it. it just keeps kind of swirling so i um so ash walks up to pu who is very very anxious and is shaking and all of that and i say i'll never tell you to not be afraid i just met you and your feelings are so important but it's people like us who make the bad things go away because they sit and they live under us all the time and and if we don't do something they win uh that's very, very wonderful, Ash. No, oh, it's Ash, scary. Ash is the name? Ash. Yes. Roll persuasion with advantage. It's a pretty good speech. Yeah. Uh, nat 20. Oh, okay. So you're fighting it, right? Yes. But she's giving the speech really well. It's <laughs> passion. She's using all, it's just really, really colorful, flowery language. It's just hitting on all the right notes. Uh, have you given much thought to becoming a bard. What? Because you're, you have a way with words that will make you rich beyond your wildest dreams. You should teach me. I think you have the talent. It's in you. <laughs> okay. It's in you all along. Get a room. We should... Guys. What? <laughs> Get a room. What I'm much too old. <laughs> what are the rest of you doing with the obelisk with each other? Okay, I am surrounding the obelisk. Um, after I made sure that Ash is like, okay, I'm waiting for the words to appear again. Can I actually roll? Um, I believe it would be Arcana. Yes, absolutely. To try to see if I can figure. It out. All right, nineteen. Nineteen. Yeah. So you're kind of you know going around it, and then it's kind of putting a hand near it, and as you roll your hand near it you can start to see lettering do you touch it yes okay wham and you're sucked into that same moment as well you're on this beachhead you see this gigantic outline of this creature that dwarfs the sun hanging in front of you i would like you to roll arcana again because you might know what this is okay 13 it's definitely the kraken You've heard tale of this creature before, and you can feel, like, as you're seeing it now, you can hear this loud thumping, and it takes you a while to recognize that it's the creature's heart. It's so big and powerful. You can hear it thudding through its chest and shaking the very ground around you. And in the moment that you realize that, you realize you can feel it inside the obelisk as you shift back into reality, and then it just continues to swarm and fade as it was before. Oh, can I roll something to try to get the location? Uh, you Perception. could try. Roll an insight. insight? Yeah. yeah. All right. Ooh, 23. 
you know it's somewhere in the ocean west of the Sword Coast, maybe a couple hundred, maybe a thousand miles west of water deep. It's in the deep ocean somewhere. Okay. All right, so the same vision that Ash just described. Do you just get launched back as well? Oh, no, of course not. No, yeah. no, this is oh, okay. Like, of course this is like, a, like it, it's, it's slow, and as he peels his fingers off, you can see like little green sparks oh, that just cool. as he separates. Like, I, I like peel it off. I kind of... Yeah. <laughs> um, and then like I say, Ash, I saw the same vision that you did. I monster. saw a huge monster. The sun was in the background. Have you have you heard of the Kraken? Have you guys heard of the Kraken? I've heard of the Kraken. Is that what you saw? I am I, 100% sure I saw the Kraken. I know about uh, some people that were way out west told tales of the Kraken. Yes. So, so the Kraken, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that this is about maybe a thousand miles west of here. Yeah, there, there in was... In the deep, deep ocean. There was a man... Uh, he released the Kraken. I think his name, Jin. Why did he Qui-Gon, do that? Qui Gon Jin was. He released. I don't why, why know. Did he, why would he I do that? I don't know why he released the Kraken. I wish I never knew about it. Sounds him. like a trap to me. Yes. <laughs> well, while they're doing that, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> I I want to see if I can detect evil. Okay. Uh, on the obelisk. Yes. Excellent. Uh, do you have to roll for that? I don't think you have to roll, I don't think right? I have to roll for that. No, I think you just, okay, so you just kind of focus. What do you think about when you're de- detecting um, evil? I, I consider my nightmares and my visions, but also think about what Shaka just told us. So I kneel in front of it and just kind of put my hands out, not quite touching, but I just close my eyes and, and focus on what I had seen in my own visions and nightmares and touch the obelisk. And, yes. With all this darkness in your mind, and you prepare mm-hmm. yourself for it, and you still can't believe how strong it is, and it's not coming from the obelisk. There is a wave of terror, of beautiful horror that comes crushing out at you from the inn, waves through the obelisk, and strikes you with fear that you know that you have never, ever faced such a powerful, such a terrifying evil before you've only heard tale you've only seen it in writing and in story and that makes me rock back and and just look at both of them we don't need to worry about the obelisk we need to get to the inn right now okay because runs towards the inn i like i love inns <laughs> i don't know <laughs> yes, if you'll like yes, this I, inn i go towards the inn as well yeah i got the information i feel like i need from the obelisk. excellent so you're brought around this corner, and you greet, or, or like kind of place before this person who's obviously holding court. You kind of come up from behind, real drunk at this at this point, throwing an arm over him. Right? What are you guys doing? Um, so what sense do I get of this guy? Like he's the one in charge. I mean, absolutely. He's yeah. just casually leaning off to the side. He keeps being handed things, and he's imbuing almost at a constant rate. Yeah. But his eyes never leave yours. Okay. So Knock Knock's just like staring at him. And he's almost like kind of like a he, – he has a weird sense of this party. So I think it, he kind of is like a little boy that's kind of like not supposed to be here. Like uh, – like, like he's at the adult party that he's not supposed to be at. You right. Know? But right. He's like there. And he's just, he's just like, waiting to be found out. Yeah. He's just like staring at this guy and like for like a beat too long. And then he's just like, happy birthday. <laughs> like he doesn't know why he's there. Like the man rolls his head back and laughs. Just this. It's like everything he does is with a little bit of malice. So even though he's laughing like it doesn't feel right, he looks back down and his eyes glint as he looks at you. And he's like, I suppose it is. For it is only once a year I can be here. It is my birthday. You are quite funny. (laughs) He like looks over at the kids that are like crying and serving people. (sighs) The kids are laughing. It's funny, isn't it? And he's like, ha, 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 ha. So funny. <laughs> Wine? Uh, uh, yeah, so now he's like holding like two in his hands. <laughs> he's just like standing there. Like, uh, I want to take a look around the room. Like, sure. Let's see if there's like anything else going on there. Roll perception. Uh, 19. So 
everyone is just every, everyone near this guy is focused on him mm. they're laughing at him they're hanging on his every word they're bringing him things anyone within like 50 feet is purely focused on him the people at the edges keep turning this way but are mainly focused on whatever they're doing drinking laughing eating falling down whatever yeah. they're doing at the moment but anyone like in his immediate area is kind of sucked into this orbit this kind of cult of personality except for his two guards who are still standing on either side of him and staring dead at you and not distracted at all. Rin, what so are you doing? Rin is like, happy birthday. <laughs> what a party. Can I have some gold that you have right mm -hmm. there, though? It looks really nice. You like gold. Oh, yeah. I do. I love it. And he kind of like pulls one gold dragon off of like, his, like, like, like just out of nowhere. Right, just off the edge of the throne that, or the chair that he's on that's been made into a throne. And he pulls one gold a dragon up. And Ren's like looking at it, he's like, And he oh rubs it and it becomes God. two. And he rubs it and it becomes three. And he rubs it and it becomes that silver crescent that's worth like 500 of them. And he rubs it and becomes one again. How what? much gold would you like? I mean, I'll take whatever you're willing to offer. And he kind of opens his hands. And it pours. Gold is now just tumbling out of his hands and cascading and crashing down the stairs in front of him. And it's just like piling up all around him. How much is enough? And at that moment, you all are at the front of the inn. This looks like my kind of place. <laughs> it's rowdy. Yes. Karen, be careful. I felt... A terrible, terrible evil here. There's terrible evil in lots of, lots of taverns. All you don't understand. I'm a paladin of tear, and it frightened me. You're not a doctor? Mm, sort of. But the point is, it frightened me. Well, I don't know you well enough to know whether or not you being frightened is, is really a big deal. But wow. then, I'm never frightened of inns. Then be my guest. Well, to to, to be fair, Perrin, through his travels of uh, you know of mediocre music, he might know some people in this inn. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so, right. so I walk through the door, Just march right on up. Yes, yes. I hang back with Salise. Right. I'm very leery on, of the yeah. bar. On totally. your head be it then. Yeah. You? So, so, you. so I yeah I walk in I walk in the bar. Uh, and there are a bunch of people uh, walking walking around in a ruckus and rowdy, and I kind of see uh, a woman that's stumbling around. And in that area, I throw, I cast Zone of Truth. Okay, excellent. And uh, so the mayor has now stumbled past and has come back around with right. her glasses of wine, yeah. mugs of wine, one red, one white. Yes. Hello. Ooh, ooh. Hello. Hello, my good lady. Yes. Um, I like wine. I like wine a lot. Oh. It makes me feel less empty inside and less sad and less frightened about everything that's happening around me right now. Click, 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 click. So uh, why is everyone in here? I really don't like halflings. Everyone's here because they have to be here because that man made us. And who is that man? He, oh, didn't give a name. But we all like him, and he's supposed to be here, and we're all supposed to bring him things. Isn't that lovely? Really? Things like what? Oh, everything he asks for. Food, wine, our souls, our children, everything. Oh. That's very, very interesting. We all gave it quite willingly. Oh, well, that is quite nice of you. Yeah, that's why we're very, rather accommodating here in Northstone. Oh, okay, and is... We have a lovely hunting lodge if you ever wanted to come. Really? We're really trying to up tourism in the area. <laughs> well, you know, you you should actually bring out, get some ads that run in the local uh, criers. That is an excellent oh, idea. Oh, you know, my husband has always been on me to really up the output. That get some correct. new blood in here. That is correct. <laughs> excellent. <laughs> it's yeah, a strong guy in the corner that hears it. It's like, get the output. <laughs> <laughs> what are the rest so, you're so, doing while this is happening? I'm walking in and just going, this is so bad. So I turn, I turn to Solis and said, uh, and I say, well, uh, there is something going on here that is a little bit out of the ordinary. 
Really? Or, and I pop up behind you, like, <laughs> like just like in your conversation. <laughs> what? Yeah, uh, apparently there is a man here who is just uh, taking people's souls. Holy. Holy souls. Yeah. Holy <laughs> souls. I Do you write. know the kind of power it takes to harvest a soul? Uh, there is, I know the kind of power it takes to get souls, souls on shoes, filet of soul. Yes. <laughs> the party stops. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's Everyone's like, <laughs> um, is is, is there just a bunch of people partying and then a bunch of children? Real or? perception. Okay. 14. Yeah, no one's trying to hide it. Yeah, there's a bunch of kids milling about. They keep bringing you things, food, drink, whatever. They look a little bit scared. Yeah. There's adults, you know, cavorting, right? Yeah. And then, like, there's clearly some sort of, like, setup in the back. Like, there's a bunch of really heavy perfume, a smoke, so it's thick inside here, and it's, like, a little dim and hazy, but there's definitely, like, a dude holding court. And then, like, you see uh, Rin and Knock Knock over there as well. It's that guy. And I kind of point over. Oh, that is the gentleman that uh, was described to me. Okay, I go over to Ren because I see that he is completely just stumbled <laughs> just over. Just hammered at this point. Stumbled all over myself. And I'm He's like, like playing cups with someone on the <laughs> table <laughs> over there, right? And, and and I'm like, what are you doing? You're young. Why? What, what are you doing here? I'm having the time of my life right now. This is where we need to be. There's gold, there's food, and lots of beer. How many more of your friends are going to arrive? Uh, knock, knock. Who's there? He's now holding like six mugs in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, um, Graz. What? Graz who? Who's there? Oh, Graz who? The prince of all demons. I feel like you're not doing it the way I do it. <laughs> How do okay. you do it? <laughs> Wait, I, I, I don't know. Wait, Grotz, the what of what? What What did you say? I am the prince of all demons. And oh. he kind of stands up. And as he stands up, he begins to grow. Grow to like six feet tall, seven feet tall, eight feet tall. His skin darkens into this purple hue, claws, and this what looked like a cape now clearly is unfolding into wings as he walks down to stand before you. And there are a lot of people that are taller than you, certainly not this much taller than you. And not growing right in front of me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, so Nikonak's just there, and he's just like, oh, man, you got to get that checked out. <laughs> he leans down, he puts a finger on your chest, and kind of lifts the locket and you see like his flesh sizzle as he does it and you can like it's right under your nose and then he kind of drops it and he looks at his own hand and you see it begin to heal and then stop and he can't fix the wound and he just glares at you and in this moment you feel as much rage and hate and anger and evil and darkness and sadness and rot and disease in that instance you've ever seen or experienced in your life. And that's just gone. Wait, he didn't disappear. Right? No, 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 no. That, that feeling is the gone. Fee oh, yeah. I feel all that. Yeah. Oh. Um, I gotta find my friends. Who sent you? Uh, it was that guy over there. I want to point to the other opposite side of him so I can run away. No <laughs> <laughs> <Real> deception. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, I run natural one. He totally buys it. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, where? Where is it? Oh, you. Knock, knock. knock uh, turns to run the opposite way, and he like puts him uh, puts the uh, the wine on the other table. He's like, I'm so sorry, dude. He's like, He's like, <laughs> <laughs> so where are you running to? Uh, like to the rest of them? Yeah, to the rest okay. of them. Like, I, I'm like, like. He's looking. still like looking like 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 he's. He's pointing at his Lou, yeah. lieutenant's like, go get that guy. Bring that guy to me now. So you've got a couple seconds. What are you guys doing? Knock, knock. Yeah, who's there? Uh, who was there? Yeah. Who was there? Who? Man, I don't have time for these games, <laughs> man. That dude is messed up. Get run. Let's get out of here. Uh, who is he? Um, I don't Dude, I really don't know. He had like this big long like name and stuff like that with like a surname at the end of it. And then he like he touched me and then I felt bad. Did he turn you into anything? 
What do I look like right now? Uh, uh, just you, a person. Oh, then it's yeah, the same. It's fine, hey, it's fine, I'm exactly it's fine. the same. <gasps> I'm scared for Don't you. Don't worry about it. All right. He's now holding three more mugs because they keep putting <laughs> mugs <laughs> in his <laughs> hands. Yeah. Not even looking. Yeah. So what did you feel? What do you mean what I felt? I felt horrible. This guy is messed up. We need to get out of here now. Where's Rin? I'm, I'm like, 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 like quarters. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm still trying to get Rin. I'm, I'm yeah. still trying to like. Rin somehow managed to like win like a hundred gold. He's got a hundred yeah. gold in front of him. He doesn't know how. It's just there. <laughs> As you look out from though, all of the like shades, the windows start to slam shut. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, as the main doors close all on their own. And you turn, and he's just standing there. Gratz is just standing there staring at you. You have ruined tonight. Um, okay, I have a, um, did, did we hear or see him grow? And then, oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, oh, there was okay, it, okay, okay, he, okay. he made a big show of it. There oh, was not, he was oh, not hiding it at oh, all. Oh, so we, okay. Oh, yeah. I, I thought it was like a different one. No, no, he made a, a big show of it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So Ren like drops his cover. He's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I know it's your birthday. We've ruined it, but I'm, I'm sorry. This Ren. food is really great, though. Ren. Yeah. That's a demon. Oh. You're probably drinking souls. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's a, he's drinking from a Solos cup. <laughs> Solos. So he just marches towards you all. And you can feel this wave of just power and sadness and terror and just kind of steps in between you and keeps walking waves a hand, the doors fling open, and he's marching towards the center of the town where the obelisk was. Oh. And his lieutenants are running behind him. Or, sorry, the two people that were on the other side of him that are clearly working for him are running behind him. The town's people are just continuing in their revelry, and the kids are continuing to hand out drinks like nothing has happened. Okay, I run outside and shout, where are you going? And he's just walking straight towards the obelisk, making no other noise. I'm sorry, doesn't acknowledge you in any way whatsoever, Wings go out, and he takes to the air. <gasps> well, where is he going? <laughs> All right. Well, he didn't tell us. Well, it looked well. Judging by his direction, and the fact that there's a huge obelisk, my guess is he might be heading there. Um, you, I think at least one of us maybe should ma make sure the townspeople are okay. But I'm heading toward the obelisk. You guys going over there? All right. Well, I'm the one with armor beside Knock Knock, so I'm going to the obelisk too. All right, everyone's running over to the obelisk. Mm -hmm. so you all run through the town and get there just in time. He's landed on top of it, and he's sunk like almost sunk his claws. Like you can see it crack along the top as he's holding it, and it's just swirling with green energy and firing through him and into the air right now. And clouds are swirling around where it strikes the sky. Um, can I roll to see if he himself looks familiar to me? Yes, go ahead and roll um, Ar Arcana or or Religion, whichever one you want to roll. Natural 20. Okay, mm. yes. yeah, he is Graz. He is uh, known as the Prince of Demons. It is a title he has given himself. Several of the demon lords uh, vie for mm -hmm. different areas in hell and control of hell, but he's one of the biggest bads. Like, you are okay. facing down something legendary, something that, you know, this is... This is as powerful as if a god was had stepped in front of you, just on the other side. And so you, this is not something you would ever think you would face in your entire life. So it's not something that I've seen before. Definitely. Oh, but you've heard of it. Okay. Everyone's heard of Gratz. Okay. Oh, it's like she's, it's, it's both fear and it's almost like the feeling of seeing a celebrity. Yeah. So it's <laughs> awe and fear and should I go up? No, I shouldn't. But I want to talk. No. That's a good, bad idea. So I'm just like, Ash, what is it? It's Gratz, the demon prince. You know who that is as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Whew. Well, this is something they trained me for. But there's in no theory, <laughs> you know, in theory, like there was probably like a half day where like if you ever meet the demon prince, <laughs> right. here's what you could theoretically do. But they didn't get into a lot of details. Yeah. And there's what? Just six of us. We would need an army to take him down. Yeah, like a kid army. 
A holy army is more like They're it. They're like putting more stuff Wait, on it. Wait, knock, <laughs> knock. We're not going to weaponize knock. the kids. What happened to the locket? There's a part that looks dark. We touched it. And they freaked out. And they got angry. And they saw you guys. And I was like, knock, knock. Who's there? Tell me more about this. And now we ran down this hill. And now we're here. And then you said, that locket. And I said, it happened up there. And then he touched it. Knock, and knock. He didn't knock, like knock, it. Knock. And I got it. I got okay. it. Wait, wait, when when uh, you said he didn't like it, are you saying that he was hurt by it? or did he Oh, yeah, he was hurt by it, for sure. As you say that, there's a crack of lightning that comes down from the clouds and strikes both him and the obelisk. You all kind of put your hands up to your eyes as it flares brightly, and then this shimmer begins to come out of the top towards the clouds and descend all around you, this oily bubble descends a mile in all directions in a dome and covers the entire town, blocking out the sky, blocking out the roads, blocking out everything on the outside. And then he just soars straight up into the air and vanishes. And it is lieutenant's turn, and they have kind of a smirk on their face as they're looking at you all. Are they in the bubble as well? Mm -hmm. They're like just standing right next to the monument, looking at both of you. All right, so like I look at the um, at the lieutenants and say, "What is going on? What is this bubble?" You've doomed this place, the first one says, and the second one says, "Yes, you've doomed them all." And those caught around, some on the road. There was a wagon. Yes, there's a wagon. There's a couple farmers out there. Maybe some hunters. A thousand souls exactly, all trapped here, forever. We didn't mean to doom anyone because what? of you. No, not because of us. And they both laugh. No, 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 because of our Lord. You angered him. You displeased him. Wearing these filthy things. On the one day a year, he could have a party. And you ruined it. And now these people will pay. Well, it looked like they were already paying. Like the streets are vacant. Like the kids in your party were terrified. They'll wake up well fed with a bit of a headache, but... They'll be fine. They will be trapped in here for the next hundred years, though. They'll all die here. Maybe the dwarf will make it. The rest won't. A hundred years? One That's hundred all years. You all may leave whenever you want. Walk through. Your lockets will protect you. But the rest of them. We have to save them. I feel bad. I said sorry. And like Ren's like, I said sorry. <laughs> no. Well, it looks like an. They were like, you have all of the gold you won, right? <laughs> yeah. So you've got, a, like, let's say a thousand gold, right? And they're just kind of like, they wave a hand, and all the coins kind of lift out of your hands and stack up neatly, right? Like on this, like, cement ring that's around the obelisk, right? And all kind of stacks up. Like, one, two, three. One thousand gold. Yes, you may free one. For every thousand dragons you bring us, you may free one. What? Choose. And they just, and, just uh, and the coins just like, like, like a huge stack in his palm, just perfect stack, 1,000 coins high, and then just drop into his palm like they're just falling into nothingness, and he close it and they're gone. Choose one. So if we bring you, there's a thousand people here. Yes. And if we bring 999 you, once you pick the first. You've got what? Well done. So if we get enough money, we can save these people? One million dragons. That's not that much, right, guys? That's a lot. Is that a lot? Is that I, a don't, lot? I don't handle money. It's a lot. Is that a lot? Who okay. can put a price tag on money? Well, you can rather. It's like one for one. It's usually extra. We'll, we'll fill them in later. Anyways, which one would you like to free? Who was your favorite? Oh, this makes my stomach hurt. I know. They're all really gross. You're all gross. You're just no. bags of flesh and snot and guilt. No, that's it's wonderful. If we have to choose, I say we choose the mayor. The mayor seemed to know exactly what was going on. And we need someone who knows exactly what's going on. Or like a little kid. Because they're little. Yes. And they're kids. The kid. We should start with the kid. Oh, how about if I line all the children up and you no! can decide which one's best? Children! <laughs> children, would you like to would you, would you like to see all of them? This is messy. And awesome. you can pick whichever one you like the best. This maybe is on other one. Maybe you can have them fight. No. Maybe they should no. fight. No. 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 So boring. 
This is not chess. Pick one. I don't have all day. The mayor, maybe. The mayor. Everyone the mayor. agreed. Yes. The mayor. And just, the mayor just kind of like appears. <laughs> and she is like tipsy for a sec, but then all of a sudden, like it's it's clearly like fading. And she's looking at her hands, and she just drops the mugs as she sees these two winged creatures around her that look very much like, like not as big as Gratz, but clearly demons at this point. Like the charade is gone, right? What's, what's, what's happening? Um, are you with her? Are you with them? No. No. Are you here to help us? We saved you. We had to pick one out of everybody and we saved you and not anybody else. What do you mean? So... Do you know why you had those flagons of wine? No, I don't remember. I just remember someone, a man, a visitor. It's a demon god, prince, dude. What do we do? Can well, you tell us more about what you remember from the last, from recent, from last couple of days? I just remember a stranger arriving, a very charming stranger, and 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 then I was here. We need to get money to save everybody else. What? How? How much money? A lot of money. One. One, one million. million. One, one million. Well, million. well, one million minus a thousand. I'm not the best at math, but you know, like nine hundred and ninety-nine, and then some nines. That <laughs> right? Yes, that you'll need that. That much, and we don't. We're just. We, there's. There's maybe two hundred gold in the treasury. Two hundred gold. You run your town? I'm sorry. I don't know what money is. Like, it says a lot. 10 gold buys a nice cow. Okay. So 200 gold for a small town in the is, treasury? Isn't there okay. okay? You know, like if there's a bad winter, they'll make it. That kind of thing. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. So we need to figure out money or how to defeat these demons. Well, if it's money, you seek, and the demons are kind of like, um, it's a lot of money in Waterdeep, we've heard. Probably your best bet. Two days north. Maybe you can get the, bring it on back. We'll keep an eye on everyone here, don't you worry. Oh, that makes me worry quite a bit. There's other ways to get money, I suppose. You could, I don't know, hunt down some beasts, look in some caves, spend the next hundred years while they slowly die and rot in here. Oh. Is there a deadline that we have to get you the... Depends how long you... No, I guess the only deadline is how long their sanity lasts, how long their spirits hold up. It's really whatever you think. You know, whatever you think is best. He makes it sound like it's our choice, right? Right! But it's definitely not, right, guys? I'm trying to figure it out. Like, his tone makes it seem like we're doing this, but we're not. You've already made your choices. See, he did it again. <laughs> it totally sounds like I'm doing things, but I'm not. I'm just standing here. <laughs> well, it, it sounds like... Even though Knock Knock so eloquently stated <laughs> so much of our choices that the only real choice is to go to Waterdeep. I'll go with you. I, they'll listen to me. They'll hear me. I have some contacts in town. I can, I can get you meetings with people you'll need to speak with. I okay. like that. Thank yeah. you very Thank much. Thank you. What's your name? Um, Melanie. Melanie. Why not? Mayor Melanie. Mayor Melanie. Mayor Melanie Brickstone. Mayor Brickstone. Okay. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We should leave now. Okay. You won't harm them. You won't harm them. And just coming back. They'll just be well fed. Don't you worry. Hurry back now. Hurry back. There's the wagons if you wanted to gather your wagons. You could take those. Uh, the, the people with you joined the rest of them. They were reveling and have completely oh. become enthralled in the rest of this thing. So it's, I mean, they may not be needing these wagons right about now. So uh, we need supplies. And I happen to know where there are some supplies. Yeah. yeah. So uh, remember that wagon that you uh, saw me when you shot me, Ash? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, those wagons have plenty of supplies. And I happen to know that when we were in the inn, all of the people that were accompanying me were in the inn as well. So we can take that with us to Waterdeep. Okay. They stay and they won't miss it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
And so, um, yeah, I'm we're, I'm gonna go like walk towards the wagon, and I'm like holding uh, Chips like a teddy bear. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, and Chips is pretty freaked out. Yeah. Chips is like kind of like nuzzled like into shaky. your hair. Yeah, yeah totally. Mm-hmm. Little fox oh, paws. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is the plan? Well, what time of day is it? It is now probably like nine p.m. around then. We should make camp and head toward Waterdeep in the morning. I agree. Okay. Imagine you're going to make camp outside the yeah, scary yeah, yeah. bubble. Right. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Towards, the towards the... So you all walk the wagons towards yeah. the edge of the town and you all get to the edge and it's just like, like it's just scary and it feels awful and weird. Like it's, it's, do you ever have a kind of a waking dream where you can sense something near you where you're mm-hmm. awake, but you're dreaming and you know if you went towards it, it would just be bad. You don't know why, but it's just bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's how this thing feels. And as you get up to it and you start to press through, the little rose inside your locket, the little petal fades and just crumbles into like shiny dust. And then the metal around it begins to corrode and the chain snaps and one by one they fall to the ground as you all walk through. And instantly we're on, you're on the other side, it's, it, it's an opaque bubble that seems to stretch forever that's eaten up part of the road and part of the forest. I mean, people are absolutely going to notice this very soon. You can see it from the high road, which you're about maybe three hours from. Does Melanie get it out of the bubble? Yes, Melanie does get out of the okay. bubble as well. There's like a little shimmer, kind of like a force field of like that same shimmering powder that seems to extend around her as she steps through and she's out as well. All right. Well, let's find a place to camp. Okay. Let's uh, go uh, camping. Um, I'm going to cast Unseen Servant. Okay. uh, Who's going to help gather gather wood and supplies totally. and everything nice. else. And there's several campsites right outside yeah. of town because, again, hunters are used to using this. There's actually a lodge that you can just... It's like one of those mm-hmm. open kind of lodges where there's no door, yeah. but you can uh, set up inside it. So it's real easy. Um, there's firewood. You guys can just like like see wood being carried invisibly through the air and placed and placed down. A little match gets struck out of nowhere and lights it. <laughs> a little pot comes out and there's some fish cooking. It's all rather nice, actually. A little bedroll gets rolled. Like, his whole thing is perfect. There's a bedroll laid out. He's got the right pillow. He's right next to the fire. There's a little leaning log and a place that where he can write and, like, maybe, like, a half yeah. desk. But it's clearly just for him. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Yes. So, um, and the mayor just kind of like takes whatever she is offered to her and just kind of huddles next to the fire. It is spring. It is early spring. So it's still a little cool in the evenings, especially this far north. Um, I see. So Ren is like, goes up to Ash and knock, knock, and just like plops himself next to him. like, what a night, you guys. We are saving the world and we're getting gold and I'm drunk. I'm sorry. You're drunk? It feels great. The last time I was drunk, I stole a lot of horses. Oh, well. I don't drink that's anymore. A thing. Well, the last time I, don't have all of I was drunk, I lost a lot of horses. Oh. Well, well then, I'm, 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 I'm going to do a couple of rounds of patrol while, <laughs> while you guys share drunk stories about horses. And then, um, excellent. So you're just going to walk around the outside? Yes. Roll me a perception. Are we, like, right outside the bubble? Yeah. Mm. We're, like, I mean, I would say, like, maybe a 10-minute, 15-minute walk outside because there's this little camping thing right there. Yeah. So you just, you can please see it. Would you? 19. 19. 19, You're, nothing's really happening. In fact, there's no animals. There's no, anything around here seems to have vacated the area. It is quiet. Okay. What, were you looking for something in particular? Uh, No, I was just wondering how... uh, like if we were in, how close we were to those two lieutenant guys? Or... Uh, oh no, they're still inside the bubble. Oh, yeah, so yeah. they stayed inside, and it's completely opaque at this point. Like you know, like um, if there's oil in water in a parking lot, and it's right. got that oily um, rainbow shimmer on it, that's what this thing looks like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to take watch because Excellent. we don't know if those demons are going to hang out in there or not. Okay, yeah. so anyone else doing anything before you take watch? Um, I'm getting my bed area set up Mm -hmm. too so um i have like a nighttime routine with chips so we like um we like 
do a dirt mound together. <laughs> so it's like kind of fluffy. And right. then I put my bedroll on top of the dirt mound. Nice. Right, and then um, chips is like digging with us. Yeah, paws. so we're like digging yeah. and like shoveling dirt, <laughs> yeah. and then uh, doing the bedroll on top of it. And I did a mini one for Chip, so he has his own little like um, tiny bedroll that I sewed. So it's like haphazardly stitched together. Right. Yeah, so yours has like a little a, a, a little quilted picture of chips on it, and his is a little quilted <laughs> picture of you. Oh, right? Yeah. It's so cute. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so that takes like thirty-seven minutes. Yeah, right? it was a really long <laughs> right. time. Right. Um, so Ren is like walking up to Ash and he's like, I'm sorry about earlier, you know, when I was trying to cut your hand off for gold. I apologize. <laughs> it's okay. Um, at least you didn't make fun of it. That's true. Yeah. Have you ever thought of yourself as a superhero? Well, no. I always, I got called bird girl and I had to leave school. Oh, I'm sorry. And then he's like, you know what though? Like, you're the best. You're I the think best. I love your talent. I want to make a name for you. All right. I'm going to call you Hawk Ash. Hawk that, Ash. Yes. That's the name. Okay. So I'm sorry about earlier. And he like walks away. He's like, be my friend tomorrow. We'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> and meanwhile, Salisa is just shaking her head like, <laughs> why did I leave the temple? And then that, that moment of, I never made it to my appointment. Oh. <laughs> nope. Well, I should send a note. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so as you all are kind of like settling in, uh, the mayor's just been kind of rocking back and forth. Then she kind of looks up for a second. So wait, I, I know I have, I have a cousin. It's it's going to be hard, but I could definitely get us in. There's there's a man. There's a man in town named Mert. There's Mert the money lender. He has so much money, just so much money. If if he can't give it to you, he can certainly get it. Can we go talk to him? Will you come with me? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Why not? All right, then we should rest up, and tomorrow morning we'll head out. Okay. Agreed? Agreed. Yes. Agreed. All right. And you all rest up. And that adventure concludes for the day. I would like us to go around and remind everyone who we are and where they can find you. Hi, my name's Tanya. You can find me everywhere at Cyphertier, C-Y-P-H-E-R-O-F-T-Y-R. Uh, I'm Brandon. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at I am Brandon TV, uh, twitch.tv slash I am Brandon. I am Cicero. I'm playing Perrin. You can find me at Stubby Stand on Twitter and pretty much every all the other social media platforms. Stubby Stand. Uh, my name is Carlos Luna. You can find me on Twitter at Carlos Critz. Uh, you could also listen to my show, The Dungeon Rats, which is pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Serena Marie. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Serena Marie and Instagram, and also on The Dungeon Rats as well. My name is Sharif Jackson, and you can find me at SharifJackson.com, S-H-A-R-E-E-F Jackson.com. My name is Aram Vartian. You can find me at Vartian on Twitter or at Neon Rival or God's Fall or the Dungeon Rats or a ton of things we do online. But right before we leave, as you're all laying down, and you finally get your little dirt mound just right, and you lay down to sleep, and a little fox is right by your head, little bushy tail always in your face, yeah, right? Just constantly. like the second he's out, the tail's in the face, you've just gotten used to it by mm -hmm. this point. You fall into this nice, peaceful sleep. But then you realize you're still conscious. You're just kind of floating in nothingness. And then you're on a street, and you sit up, and like your bedroll's there. The fox isn't. It's just, it's, just, it's just you. Everything's the same, except you're just in this wide open, cobbled street in the middle of water deep. Uh, I, I walk down the street. So you start walking, kind of aimlessly, yeah. right? But you kind of feel like you're being brought yeah. kind of to the edge of the city, to you're overlooking the ocean all around you. And the waves are crashing up against the hill and you can smell the, the salt air. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Um, I am, because I can't tell if it's a dream or if it's not a dream, right? So it just feels like a lucid dream. So I... I'm trying to find the end of the dream. Because in lucid dreaming, if you can control the dream, there's always an end point or a place where you can change it. So that's what I'm, I'm looking for. You just feel drawn mm -hmm. out into the ocean and you're staring and trying to focus. Yeah. And then you can see like in the fog and that there's this thick bands of fog around the city, a form so big, so large coming towards 
the city and you can just hear even though its footsteps are clearly underwater that thoom 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 and then there is a roar from behind you and a blast of flame rockets over your head towards it and you wake up oh, okay. and is there and i everyone's sleeping like everybody's out right um because i know shaka the most right now I like crawl over to his bedroll. Shaka, wake up! Shaka, wake up! Wake up! I'm a very hard sleeper, so I'm, so, just, I'm just knocked out. I'm drooling. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I grab your cheeks with my hand oh my and I start like jiggling them. Like, oh, wake up! Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, had, what are you doing? What are you nightmare. doing? I had a nightmare. There's her and the fox just right over yeah. you right now. A nightmare? Oh my god. No, 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 listen. There's something else with the beast coming out of the sea, with the kraken. There's another thing. Oh, okay, okay, what? I don't know. I don't, I don't know! That's what Comfort you woke, me! Is that what you woke me up for? Yeah, can I sleep in, like, by you? Sure, tonight? sure, come by. Okay. Come on, the fox your, is already like curled up right, right here. Right here. Yeah. She's curled up there. You guys all just kind of form this little burrito of friends, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. And you lay down and your heart's beating and you're scared and you swear you heard another roar maybe. But no, no, no. You're just imagining it. And you lay back down to sleep and you all go to bed. And that'll be it for today. Thank you guys so much for joining us. This has been Rivals of Waterdeep. We will be here uh, we'll be here in the uh, One Shot studios. And first of all, thank you very much to One Shot for letting us be in this amazing place that has let the game run really, really well. Thank you to our engineer. Yeah. We, we, we got a wave. Yeah. And we will be here uh, next Sunday at 12 p.m. Central, as well as the Sunday after that in 12 at, at 12 p.m. Uh, uh, Central. And then we'll be in our own uh, studio every Sunday at 12 p.m. Central after that. So that's it, guys. Good job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See you next Bye. week. Bye. Bye.